The House of the Spirits Spanish, La Casa de los Espíritus, 1982, is the debut novel of Isabel Allende. The novel was rejected by several Spanish-language publishers before being published in Barcelona in 1982. Two, it became an instant bestseller, was critically acclaimed, and catapulted Allende to literary stardom. The novel was named Best Novel of the Year in Chile in 1982, and Allende received the country's Panorama Literario Award. 3. The House of the Spirits has been translated into over 20 languages. Isabel Angelica Allende Yona, Latin American Spanish, Isa Beta L and I, born 2 August 1942, as a Chilean American, 6th 7th writer. Allende, whose works sometimes contain aspects of the genre magical realism, is known for novels such as The House of the Spirits La Casa de los Espíritus, 1982, and City of the Beasts La Ciudad de las Bastillas, 2002, which have been commercially successful. Allende has been called the world's most widely read Spanish language author. 8. In 2004, Allende was inducted into the American Academy of Arts and Letters, 9, and in 2010, she received Chile's National Literature Prize. 10. President Barack Obama awarded her the 2014 Presidential Medal of Freedom. 2. The book was first conceived by Allende when she received news that her 100-year-old grandfather was dying. She began to write him a letter that ultimately became the manuscript of The House of the Spirits. 5. Her novel is influenced by Gabriel Garcia Marquez's novel 100 Years of Solitude. The story details the life of the Truba family, spanning four generations, and tracing the post-colonial social and political upheavals of Chiletha the country's name and the names of figures closely paralleling historical ones, such as, the candidate president, Salvador Allende, or the poet, Pablo Neruda, are never explicitly given. The story is told mainly from the perspective of two protagonists, Esteban and Alba, and incorporates elements of magical realism. Plot Summary the story starts with the Del Valle family, focusing upon the youngest and the oldest daughters of the family, Clara and Rosa. The youngest daughter, Clara Del Valle, has paranormal powers and keeps a detailed diary of her life. Using her powers, Clara predicts that an accidental death will occur in the family. Shortly after this, Clara's sister, Rosa the Beautiful, is killed by poison intended for her father who is running for the Senate. Clara is shocked into mutinous after witnessing the autopsy performed on her sister's body. Rosa's fiancé, a poor miner named Esteban Truba, is devastated and attempts to mend his broken heart by devoting his life to restoring his family hacienda, Las Tres Marias, which has fallen into poverty and disrepair. He sends money to his spinster sister who takes care of their arthritic mother in town. Through a combination of intimidation and reward, he enforces respect and labor from the fearful peasants and turns Tres Marias into a model hacienda. He turns the first peasant who spoke to him upon arrival, Pedro Segundo, into his foreman, who quickly becomes the closest thing that Truba ever has to an actual friend during his life. He rapes many of the peasant women and children, and his first victim, then 15-year-old Pancha Garcia, becomes the mother of his bastard son, Esteban Garcia. Throughout the novel, he visits Tronsado Soto, a prostitute. With Esteban's help, she becomes a wildly successful brothel madam in the city and always is willing to repay the favor to him. Esteban returns to the city to see his dying mother. After her death, Esteban decides to fulfill her dying wish for him to marry and have legitimate children. He goes to the Del Valle family to ask for Clara's hand in marriage. Clara accepts Esteban's proposal. She herself has predicted her engagement two months prior, speaking for the first time in nine years. During the period of their engagement, Esteban builds what everyone calls the big house on the corner, a large mansion in the city where the Truba family will live for generations. After their wedding, Esteban's sister Ferula comes to live with the newlyweds in the big house on the corner. Ferula develops a strong dedication to Clara, which fulfills her need to serve others. However, Esteban's wild desire to possess Clara and to monopolize her love causes him to throw Ferula out of the house. She curses him, telling him that he will shrink in body and soul, and die like a dog. Although she misses her sister-in-law, Clara is unable to find her by any means the gap between her and her husband widens as she devotes more time to her daughter and the mystic arts. Clara gives birth to a daughter named Blanca and later, to twin boys Jamie and Nicholas. The family, which resides in the capital, stays at the hacienda during the summertime. Upon arriving at Trace Marias for the first time, Blanca immediately befriends a young boy named Pedro Tercero, who is the son of her father's foreman. 
Blanca and Pedro grow up together as best friends despite them being of two different social and economic classes. During their teenage years, Blanca and Pedro Tercero eventually become lovers. After an earthquake that destroys part of the hacienda and leaves Esteban injured, the Trubas move permanently to Las Tres Marias. Clara spends her time teaching, caring for her husband's battered body, and writing in her journals while Blanca is sent to a convent school and the twin boys back to an English boarding school, both of which are located in the city. Blanca fakes an illness so as to be sent back to Las Tres Marias, where she can be with Pedro Tercero, but when she arrives home she finds that Pedro Tercero has been banished from the hacienda by Esteban on account of his revolutionary socialist ideas. Pedro Tercero meets with Blanca in secret adopting disguises while also spreading his ideas in the form of song to neighboring haciendas. A visiting French count to the hacienda, Jean de Satigny, reveals Blanca's nightly romps with Pedro Tercero to her father. Esteban furiously goes after his daughter and brutally whips her. When Clara expresses horror at his actions, Esteban slaps her, knocking out her front teeth. Clara decides to never speak to him again, reclaims her maiden name and moves out of Trace Marias and back to the city, taking Blanca with her. Esteban, furious and lonely, blames Pedro Tercero for the whole matter, putting a price on the boy's head with the corrupt local police. At this point, Pedro Segundo deserts Esteban, telling him he does not want to be around when Truba inevitably catches his son. Enraged by Pedro Segundo's departure, Truba begins hunting for Pedro Tercero himself, eventually tracking him down to a small shack near his hacienda. He only succeeds in cutting off three of Pedro's fingers, and is filled with regret for his uncontrollable furies. Blanca finds out she is pregnant with Pedro Tercero's child. Esteban, desperate to save the family honor, gets Blanca to marry the French count by telling her that he has killed Pedro Tercero. At first, Blanca gets along with her new husband, but she leaves him when she discovers his participation in sexual fantasies with the servants. Blanca quietly returns to the Truba household and gives birth to her daughter, Alba. Meanwhile, Jamie and Nicholas both fall in love with a young drug addict named Amanda. Amanda initially loves Nicholas and becomes pregnant with his child. Jamie has to perform an abortion, ruining his relationship with Nicholas. Amanda and her little brother Miguel stay for a short time at the Truba house, Miguel is able to witness Alba's birth, his future lover. Esteban Truba eventually moves to the Truba house in the capital as well, although he continues to spend periods of time in Trace Marias. He becomes isolated from every member of his family except for little Alba, whom he is very fond of. Esteban runs as a senator for the conservative party but is nervous about whether or not he will win. Clara speaks to him, through signs, informing him that, those who have always won will win again, this becomes his motto. Clara then begins to speak to Esteban through signs, although she keeps her promise and never actually speaks to him again. A few years later, Clara dies peacefully and Esteban is overwhelmed with grief. Alba is a solitary child who enjoys playing make-believe in the basement of the house and painting the walls of her room. Blanca has become very poor since leaving Jean de Satigny's house, getting a small income out of selling pottery and giving pottery classes to mentally ill children, and is once again dating Pedro Tercero, now a revolutionary singer-songwriter. Alba and Pedro are fond of each other, but do not know they are father and daughter, although Pedro suspects this. Alba is also fond of her uncles. Nicholas is eventually kicked out by his father, supposedly moving to North America. When she is older, Alba attends a local college where she meets Miguel, now a grown man, and becomes his lover. Miguel is a revolutionary, and out of love for him, Alba involves herself in student protests against the conservative government. After the victory of the People's Party, a socialist movement Alba celebrates with Miguel. Fearing a communist dictatorship, Esteban Truba and his fellow politicians plan a military coup of the socialist government. However, when the military coup is set into action, the military men relish their power and grow out of control. Esteban's son Jamie is killed by power-driven soldiers along with other supporters of the government. After the coup, people are regularly kidnapped and tortured. Esteban helps Blanca and Pedro Tercero flee to Canada, where the couple finally find their happiness. The military regime attempts to eliminate all traces of opposition and eventually comes for Alba. She is made the prisoner of Colonel Esteban Garcia, the son of Esteban Trubas and Pancha Garcia's illegitimate son, and hence the grandson of Esteban Truba. During an earlier visit to the Truba house, Garcia had molested Alba as a child. 
In pure hatred of her privileged life and eventual inheritance, Garcia tortures Alba repeatedly, looking for information on Miguel. He rapes her, thus completing the cycle that Esteban Truba put into motion when he raped Pancha Garcia. When Alba loses her will to live, she is visited by Clara's spirit who tells her not to wish for death, since it can easily come, but to wish to live. She begins to write down her family's story in her mind. Garcia, fearful of his growing attachment to Alba, discards her. Esteban Truba manages to free Alba with the help of Miguel and Tronsado Soto, his old friend and the brothel madam. After helping Alba write their memoir, Esteban Truba dies in the arms of Alba, accompanied by Clara's spirit, he is smiling, having avoided Ferula's prophecy that he will die like a dog. Alba is pregnant, though whether the child is Miguel's or the product of her rape is unknown. Alba embraces this ambiguity, however, loving her unborn child is above all, it is her own. Alba resolves that she will not seek vengeance on those who have injured her, choosing to believe in the hope that one day the human cycle of hate and revenge will be broken. Alba is revealed to be the narrator of the novel, which she writes while she waits for Miguel and for the birth of her child. Main Characters Edit Some of the characters' names are significant, particularly the women's names, which often indicate the personalities of the characters. The names Nivia, Clara, Blanca, and Alba are more or less synonyms, and this is mentioned as a family tradition. Nivia means Snow White, and can be translated as, white, as can all the others, though they have specific meanings. Ferula's name means, rod, in Latin, when used in Spanish it refers to an object used to immobilize a limb, such as a splint or cast. Clara del Valle Truba, edit. Clara, one of its translations is the equivalent of English, clear, although it is also a common female name, is the key female figure in the novel. She is a clairvoyant and telekinetic who is rarely attentive to domestic tasks, but she holds her family together with her love for them and her uncanny predictions. She is the youngest daughter of Severo and Nivia del Valle, wife of Esteban Truba, and mother of Blanca, Jamie, and Nicholas. Even as a child her strangeness is noticed and seen as a threat to many in her community. Otherwise, her family and devoted nanny protect her from her strangeness. She and her uncle Marcos use her powers to run a fortune-telling center as she develops other paranormal activities like dream reading. Her uncle eventually leaves in a primitive airplane he built himself, disappearing for many months, assumed dead but later is found to die instead as a result of a mysterious African plague, contracted during his travels. Clara practices divining and moving inanimate objects, most notably a three-legged table, and she is surrounded by friends such as the psychic Mora sisters and the poet. Severo and Nivia del Valle are main characters in another Allende novel. As Clara grows up, she develops her abilities and is even able to communicate with ghosts and spirits. Clara represents love and cherishment. Clara's marriage to Esteban Truby is something she accepts but she never truly loves him and knows from the beginning that she will never do so. She is uninterested in material things and takes for granted her own high economic standing. It is not until later, after great tragedy, that she takes the role of helper, servant instead of dreamy bystander. Esteban Truba, edit. Esteban Truba is the central male character of the novel and is one of the story's main narrators along with his granddaughter Alba. In his youth, he seeks the mermaid-like and green-haired Rosa the Beautiful, daughter of Severo and Nivia del Valle, toiling in the mines to earn a suitable fortune so that he can support her. However, she dies by accidental poisoning while he is working in the mines, a cruel stroke of fate that hardens his heart. He works hard to develop his estate at Trace Marias, Three Marys, a nickname for Orion's belt, and seduces and rapes many local peasant women, fathering many illegitimate children, including Esteban Garcia, by Pancha Garcia, sister of Pedro Segundo. Although he eventually marries Clara, Rose's sister and youngest daughter of the Del Valles, and raises a large family, Esteban's stubborn and violent ways alienate all those around him. Esteban has a tense relationship with his daughter Blanca but shows genuine love and devotion to his granddaughter Alba. Despite his often violent behavior, he is also devoted to his wife Clara, entering into a state of permanent mourning following her death. As a self-made man who earned all of his wealth from years of work spent improving Trace Marias, Esteban scorns communists and believes them to be lazy and stupid. Later in life, he turns to politics where he spends his money and effort trying to prevent the rising socialist movement within the country. However, after the military coup he loses much of his power and suddenly has to face the fact that he has become an old and weak man. Yet it is not the loss of power, so much as the injury done to his country, that agonizes the highly patriotic Esteban. 
His realization that he desires the love of his family and peace in his country leads to a pivotal change in his character. In his last days, he slowly loses the rage that has been driving him all his life. He begins to make amends to the remaining members of his family, first, by helping Blanca and Pedro Tercero escape the country so they can live happily, and then, after Alba is kidnapped by the military, by persuading his longtime friend Tronsado Soto who has influence in the military to help him rescue her. With the success of both of his efforts, Esteban dies happily, knowing that he has achieved Clara's posthumous forgiveness. Blanca Truba Blanca, literally, white, is Clara and Esteban's firstborn daughter. She spends her childhood between the Trubas's house in the capital and Tres Marias, where she forms an intense connection with a boy named Pedro Tercero Garcia, the son of Esteban's foreman. Their friendship endures, though they only see each other in the summer, and upon adolescence they become lovers. Their love persists even after Pedro is run out of the hacienda by Esteban, because he is putting communist ideas in the other workers' heads. After she becomes pregnant with Pedro Tercero's child, her father forces her to marry Count Jean de Satigny, who she does not love. After Blanca leaves the Count and returns to the Truba home, she sees Pedro sporadically, resisting his attempts to persuade her to marry, but their relationship continues. Blanca's reconciliation with her father eventually allows her to flee to Canada with Pedro, where they finally are able to achieve happiness together. Blanca is also able to earn large amounts of money for the first time by selling her clay figurines, which are seen as folk art by Canadians. Pedro Tercero Garcia. Edit. Pedro is the son of the tenant and foreman of Tres Marias, Pedro Segundo Garcia. At a young age, he falls in love with Blanca and is the father of her only child, Alba. In his youth, he spreads socialist ideals to the workers on the hacienda, and later he becomes a revolutionary and a songwriter. His character may be modeled after revolutionary songwriter Victor Hara. After the coup d'etat in his country, he and Blanca exile themselves to Canada with Esteban's help. It is mentioned that he resumes his political crusade during his exile in Canada where his music is embraced in translation even if chickens and foxes are underdeveloped creatures, in comparison with the eagles and wolves of the north. Alba Truba de Satigny Alba, Spanish for, Don, Latin for, White, is the daughter of Blanca and Pedro Tercero Garcia, although for many years of her life she was led to believe that Count de Satigny was her father. From before her birth, her grandmother Clara decreed that she was blessed by the stars. Because of this, Clara said she didn't need to go to school, as a result, Alba was raised at home until she was seven. The novel ends with Esteban's death, and Alba sits alone in the vast Truba mansion beside his body. The last paragraph reveals that she is pregnant, although she does not know or care whether the child is Migas or the product of the rapes that she endured at the hands of security police during her imprisonment. Severo and Nivea del Valle Edit. Severo, literally, severe, and Nivea, snowy, are the parents of Rosa, Clara, and several other children. Severo's candidacy for the Liberal Party of Chile promptly came to an end after someone tried to poison him, but killed his daughter Rosa instead. Nivea, however, would come to become a prominent social activist for women's liberation. The couple pass away in a gruesome car accident in which Nivea is decapitated and her head lost. The details of the accident were hidden from their daughter Clara, because she was pregnant at the time. However, her intuition brings her to the location of the lost head, which ends up being hidden in the basement since the body had already been buried. The Nanny. Edit. Having served the Del Valle and Truba families all her life, Nana is emotionally close to all the children that she has taken care of, especially Clara. She even takes care of Clara's children after Severo's and Nivea's death. Nana passes away in an earthquake and is buried without fanfare. Her body is later moved to the mausoleum with Clarice and Rosa's bodies. Rosa del Valle. Edit. The oldest daughter of Severo and Nivea, Rosa was born with green hair, gold eyes and great beauty. Her unearthly beauty intimidates everyone in the village except for Esteban Truba, who is deeply enamored of her and seeks her hand in marriage. Rosa waits patiently while Esteban slowly accumulates wealth by working in the mines so that he will feel worthy of Rosa. Esteban returns to find that Rosa has died from a dose of poison meant for her father. Though never truly forgetting Rosa, Esteban marries her sister Clara instead. Jamie Truba. Edit. Jamie is the son of Clara and Esteban Truba. A shy, bookish, and compassionate doctor who treats the poor, he serves as a contrast to his outgoing twin brother Nicholas and his bad-tempered father. 
Jaime has always had a strained relationship with his father, especially given Jaime's revolutionary ideals. He becomes friends with the candidate whilst under the impression that the revolution is to be peaceful. Jaime also becomes good friends with Alba, whom he treats as a sister. He is summoned to the presidential palace during the coup and is killed for refusing to announce that the president has drunkenly committed suicide. Esteban doesn't believe it until Jaime appears in spirit to Clara, showing her how he had been murdered by the regime. Jaime may be inspired by the personal Dr. Arturo Giron of the Chilean president Salvador Allende. The House of the Spirits by Isabel Allende is rich with themes and arguments that weave through its magical realism narrative. Here are some of the main arguments with examples. 1. The Power of Memory and History Argument the novel emphasizes the importance of memory and history in shaping personal and collective identities. It suggests that understanding and confronting the past is crucial for both personal growth and societal progress. Example, the character of Clara del Valle possesses psychic abilities and keeps detailed diaries of her experiences. Her journals not only document the personal history of the Truba family but also serve as a means of preserving the collective memory of the nation. Clara's recollections and written accounts help in understanding the families and the country's past. 2. The Intersection of Personal and Political Realities Argument Allende intertwines personal stories with political events to show how individual lives are impacted by larger socio-political forces. The novel illustrates that personal destinies are often shaped by political and historical contexts. Example The rise and fall of the Truba family's fortunes mirror the political instability in the country. For instance, Esteban Truba's initial prosperity as a wealthy landowner is challenged by the political upheavals and reforms that occur during his lifetime, reflecting the broader impact of social change on personal lives. 3. Gender and Power Dynamics Argument The novel explores the dynamics of power and gender, particularly focusing on the roles and struggles of women in a patriarchal society. It highlights both the constraints and the strengths that define the female character's experiences. Example. Clara del Valle and her granddaughter Alba Truba are central figures in this argument. Clara's strength and resilience in a male-dominated society are evident through her ability to influence the family and society despite the limitations imposed on her. Alba's story, particularly her struggle and eventual resistance against political repression, further underscores the theme of female empowerment. 4. Magical realism is a reflection of Latin American culture. Argument Magical realism in the novel serves as a means to reflect and explore the unique aspects of Latin American culture, where the boundaries between the magical and the real are often fluid. Example, the novel's use of supernatural elements, such as the spirits that communicate with Clara or the prophetic visions, is a way to represent the cultural belief in the interconnectedness of the spiritual and the material worlds. These elements are not merely fantastical but are deeply rooted in the cultural and historical experiences of Latin America. Five. The Impact of Social Inequality and Class Struggle Argument The novel critiques social inequality and class struggle, illustrating how systemic injustice and exploitation affect both individuals and society as a whole. Example The character of Esteban Truba, who begins as a poor young man and becomes a wealthy landowner, reflects the class disparities and the exploitation of the lower classes. His treatment of the peasants on his estate and his eventual regret and attempts at redemption highlight the themes of social injustice and the struggle for equality. These arguments are intricately woven into the narrative of the House of the Spirits, providing a rich tapestry that blends personal, political, and social themes with the magical realism for which Allende is renowned. Isabel Allende's The House of the Spirits holds significant relevance and has made a lasting impact across various domains. Here's a breakdown of its significance, relevance, legacy, contribution, and impact. 1. Significance Cultural representation. The novel provides a profound exploration of Latin American culture, history, and social issues through a blend of magical realism and historical fiction. It captures the essence of Latin American life, reflecting the social, political, and cultural complexities of the region. Magical realism. As a seminal work in the genre of magical realism, the novel helped define and popularize this style of writing, blending the magical with the everyday to reveal deeper truths about reality and human experience. 2. Relevance Historical context. The novel is relevant for its depiction of the political and social upheavals in Latin America, particularly reflecting the impact of political regimes, social injustice, and class struggles. 
It serves as a historical document that provides insight into the era's complexities. Gender Issues The book's exploration of gender dynamics and the role of women in apatriarchal society remains relevant today, offering a critique of traditional gender roles and highlighting women's strength and resilience. 3. Legacy Literary Influence the House of the Spirits established Isabel Allende as a major literary figure and influenced subsequent Latin American writers. Its success paved the way for other authors exploring similar themes and employing magical realism. Adaptations The novel's legacy extends to various adaptations, including a successful film adaptation in 1993, which helped bring Allende's work to a broader international audience. 4. Contribution Literary Style the book's contribution to the genre of magical realism is significant. It demonstrates how blending the magical with the realistic can enhance storytelling and provide new ways of understanding human experiences and historical events. Political and Social Commentary By intertwining personal and political narratives, the novel contributes to discussions on the impact of political events on personal lives and offers a critique of social inequalities. 5. Impact Global Recognition the House of the Spirits has had a profound impact globally, introducing readers around the world to Latin American literature and culture. Its translation into numerous languages has expanded its reach and influence. Inspiration for Writers The novel has inspired countless writers and readers, particularly those interested in exploring the intersections of history, politics, and personal narratives through innovative literary techniques. In summary,